Hello there, my mavens here, and another video where we try to make money buying eBay stuff. So these look like they're all Argos returns. Most of the brand is Bush, which is not the highest of quality of stuff. But saying that, so far I've done one video on it and I think they made some interesting fixes, these four items here. And I got four out of four working, which is fantastic. So let's just start filming. I don't know how many I'm gonna get through. It depends on how involved the faults are. But to start with, we're gonna do a little CD player radio thing, little stereo. Let me show you it, it's got no sound. So here it is, it's a little bush boom box pretty in pink now it is supposed to be playing and if i go to the next one here it does like you know recognize the 11 tracks on the cd but yet there's just uh, there's no sound coming out so i've got the volume here and nothing's happening at all also if i go to radio which is that one there there's no static no sound no nothing so let's get it over to the mat and see if we can fix this one all right we're unplugged cd's out Let's undo all the uh, let's undo all the screws and see what we're left with. Now, if memory serves me right, I've really looked at something very similar to this a few years ago. Now it was sent over by uh, Stuart from Infinite Bargains for You, and it was a uh, faulty transistor. But I can't remember what the symptoms were. Whether it was no power or no uh, sound or what it was, I don't know. And I think the other one needed. I think I had two of them. The other one needed a new laser. There we go, and this one. Right, so we are free. Seems to be a bit of grease up here. There's no audio, so why is that? So we have a linear little transformer coming in here. So this is where it goes into, from here. Does it go, uh, yeah, that's the low voltage there, I presume. I'm unplugged here, I just wanna see. There's a little kind of contact switch up the top here. I wonder what that's about. Hmm. Right, so when that's not in, you can power it by battery straight into the board here. So this is like the input for the voltage going into it here. But when you plug this in, then it bypasses, it's, it's, it breaks it from here, you see. It doesn't allow it to go through on this red wire. Red wire here to this red wire here. Quite clever. Okay, so here's all the clever stuff this side. Now, from memory, it was a transistor down here that wasn't working before. Right, I think I should probably watch back my other video and see what the fault is, because it might have the same fault. It might be as simple as that transistor. Let's just see if we have, on the speakers, if we have an ohms reading. Right, so that's nearly a five ohm speaker that way, and this side. Yeah, nearly a 5 ohm speaker. So remember, left and right and the ground's in the middle. So the speakers are okay. So I think it's either going to be an audio chip or the same problem before with that transistor not passing the signal through. I think I'm going to go from that kind of area. Or what I might do is I might just work back from this contact backwards because we know we've got no audio. Why is that? Is it the audio chip? I'm just going to remove this thing here. So I've got a bit more room to work. So, contacts here. Let's zoom in and go from there and see what's going on. Let's take the board out completely. There we go, we're free. So I'm gonna be working on continuity. And we're looking at these ones here. So, grounds are gonna be in contact with each other, fine. Let's go from this one here. So it goes to here through here, onto here. What is that? It is that small capacitor there. Right, okay, where do you go to after that? Is that the positive of that one then? Top one's the negative. Right, so that's the neg okay, that's the negative of that capacitor. So 
goes through here. Oh, into here. Right, okay. So this here must be the audio chip. So it could be the audio chip that's failed. Just under this heat sink. Right, let's see what's happening on this side. This one goes up to here, which again, I presume is going to be a capacitor. Yes. And again, it goes into the audio chip. So it looks like it's the audio chip at fault. But let's, uh, what we can do is, we can put some power into this board, can't we? And we can then uh, probe here on the audio chip, see if we're getting anything out. Thing is, we're not going to, are we? Because it's just there. We would, we would get something. You're not going to have both capacitors fail. Hmm. So maybe this is not getting an input. I think we need to look up what the audio chip is and find out where the input is for it. Right, so I've got mains going into it, but I'm not going to put my fingers anywhere near this down here. Oh, sorry, there's the, li there's the linear transformer, of course, that's just a connector. That's the transformer there, and then it comes out here. Right, so I'm not putting my hands anywhere near that bit there. Let's just concentrate purely on this here. So when it's here, that's going to be in the off position. So we want to put it to radio so we get static, which is going to be the second one along there. Okay, I've got my little powered speaker here and I've got a 3.5 millimeter jack coming out of it. So I'm gonna use the grounds here. I presume that's grounds. And let's work back from here. No. So there's nothing. So what I need to do is I need to find out what the input is into this chip and see if we can go via the uh, the input pins and see if we can hear any static from there. So I'm gonna unplug and I'm gonna take off the lid here. Oh, it's soldered on, isn't it? Right, okay. Yeah. Let me undo these big lumps of solder so I can get a look at the actual audio chip. That's that side pulled out. Right, so that's lovely and clear now. TA8227P, let's get the pin out for that. And let's see what the input pins are for the audio. And then if we put this on here, and we can hear that the input pins have static, then it says to me that the audio chip itself has failed. Right, so looking at the chip here, we've got the outs here, which we've already seen on ours. Looks like we've got the inputs here for the power, number one and 12. And we've got the big massive grounds in the middle, so that's fine. And it looks like we've got the in for the, uh, I presume, the music coming in here and here. Hmm. So let's get power into it again and let's probe here and here, see if anything's happening. If not, we can maybe try to measure voltage here and here and see if it's got any voltage feeding the chip. Right, so it still should be in the same thing as before with the radio. Let's turn this on. And let's use the massive one in the middle here. And let's go here. There we go, listen to that. Can you hear that? How great is that? I love that. Can you hear the static? Right, remember it's not it's not gonna be no, it's not amplified yet, is it? Because this chip is doing the amplification. But can you hear? I'm hoping you can hear that. So that says to me the audio chip's gone. Unless, hold on, maybe the audio chip's not getting any voltage. It could be as simple as that. Right, let's see. I don't know what voltage it should be getting, but it's gonna be on these top two, isn't it? Because we got VCC1 and VCC2. So let's go between the ground and VCC2 and the ground and VCC1. Let's see what we've got. 0.6 volts, that don't seem very high, does it? 15 volts, right, now, is it fed from that? Do we also need to have it fed from here as well? If we do, does that suggest that's our, that's our problem? We've got 15 volts on this side, so the chip's definitely getting fed. I wonder, do we have to have that here as well? Let's follow the path from here and see where it goes to. Let's zoom right in and I'll just read out the voltages. 
That's exciting, isn't it? Now, here, here, 0.6 of a volt. So it goes to here, 0.6 of a volt. It goes all the way round, all the way round. Don't tell me it's going to go to that transistor. No way it's going to that transistor. What could it be a 40s transistor again? 0.6 of a volt. Let's see what we've got here. I've got to be very careful. I don't want to put my hands near the mains. 1.3 volts. 14 volts. No way. Could it be the same 40 transistor again? Unbelievable. So uh, I think it is. We've got 14 volts here and yet we've got nothing here. I don't think this has been, unless of course it's not been told to switch. So maybe there's a problem with this one here. But first things first, I'm going to pull out my old transistors because there's two TY. I remember I bought 10 of them, so I should, I think, probably have eight or nine of them left. It'd be amazing if it was the same. Oh, I love it when I've got spare. So this is it here. And looking at the date, 3rd of December, 2019. Wow. I've been doing this for quite a bit of time now. You'd think I'd be more improved, but I'm slowly getting there. Anyway, these are them here. Uh, the 2TY is actually S8550. 10 of them for £2.24 and that was delivered. Well, I'm just going to use a little bit of hot air on that. I wonder why this one here is like a weak spot. You know, why, why if, uh, if it's failed, I wonder why. Because there's another T2A over here, you know, why is, why is the one over here not failing? This one here. That came off easy. Just adding a tiny bit of leaded solder. And let's pop the new one on. Where did that go? That blew somewhere. No, I've just lost 24p. It blew off somewhere. So it was here. Is it on the board somewhere? Oh no, that's another few hundred views gone down the drain. Oh. I've got to find it. Oh, found you. Here it is. Ah, oh, relief. Whew. Thought I was poorer by 24p there. Excellent. Right, I'm going to use slightly less airflow this time. Right, I've got my temperature 500 degrees Celsius, 70 out of a possible 200 airflow. Let's just pop this on. Right, they've got a shiny, pop it on here. Right, that's in its home. Let it cool and we'll test it. I'll just put a little bit of IPA just to get rid of the flux. I think it's gonna work. So let's plug it in and see what we've got. So we now have the voltage going through to the top here. What do you think, yes or no? I think yes. There you go, 13 volts. And it was 0.6 volts before. And this side, 14.5. I don't know if they should be different voltages or not, but it's there and it wasn't there before. Results. Right, okay, let's uh, plug in here. And we should here some audio come out of it, or some static. There we go. And volume. How good is that? Results. Okay, I am going to put it all back together and we'll see if the CD player is working. Fantastic. Right, let me unplug that. 
Oh wow, same transistor again. So all that hard work, and I really did put, I put over a day's work into that before, paid off for me again, which is lovely. I wonder, no, I don't think anybody's mentioned it in the comment section, but I wonder, has anybody else bothered to try to fix these? Probably not, because they're kind of cheap, but it would be nice if they had, and they could have just fixed it with a 24p transistor. Fantastic. Right, okay, I need to do a little bit of soldering off that antenna back on, and then just put it all back together. It is all working, listen. And off there, we'll go to the next track, and I'll put the volume up only for a second because of copyright. So let me just show you this one. Yeah, so that's working fine. And radio reception is really bad, but hopefully you'll hear it. There. There we go, excellent. Now, I love that fix there. All of this here was saved from landfill by that. Isn't that amazing? That tiny little thing there and 24p. Obviously, it's a massive shame that the product isn't an expensive, good quality product, but still, as far as the fix is concerned, I love that one there. So I presume we can only go downhill from here. So let's go on to the next one and see what sort of luck we have on that. Right, next up, we have this little Bush personal DAB radio. And you know what? It's not a little bad thing to put in your pocket. So it's rechargeable, got a rechargeable battery and you can see it's charging right now. If I unplug it, it still seems to be holding its charge. It is low battery, but it's holding its charge. What I've noticed is though, annoyingly, is I can't show it to you very well because these two speakers are so close to each other, but it's only playing out of one ear. And then when I wiggle it, it plays out of two ears, but it's really noticeable on the headphones, but not so noticeable through here. Now, although you won't be able to hear it properly, I'll be able to visually show you it. So there's just a few screws on the back that needs to be undone, and then it comes apart really easy. And you can actually plainly see on the inside the problem with it. Ah, uh, yeah, it's broken, look. Look here. Excellent. Just has to be the best bunch of faults ever. So they're all so varied, but they're all honest. Can you see there? It's lifted at the back. Look at that. So that's why it works and doesn't work. Because the front ones are connected, but the back one's not. Look at that there. Ah, it's going to be nice and easy to fix. So with this one, we just need to add a bit of flux to each of the contacts and then just re-solder them all. But I'm gonna add solder to each and every one of them as well, just to try to give it a bit more mechanical strength. What's happening here is, it's just through use. So constant plugging in off the headphone cable will eventually break this here, especially if you're a little bit rough with it. Or maybe it's been dropped a few times and it's landed on the uh, the actual jack itself of the headphone cable and that shock has kind of gone through into the headphone socket here and put pressure where it contacts the board. But in this instance here, it's easily fixable, but if it keeps getting dropped, the same thing will happen again. Right, I've just tested it out with the headphones and 100% it's working, it doesn't matter how I wiggle it. So if I turn it on now, it's got FM and it's also got DAB. And if you have a listen here, it doesn't matter how I wiggle it, forget about the reception, but if I wiggle it this way or that way, it doesn't come and go anymore. And if I go to DAB, and put the volume up. Once this last deed is done, I can feel free. Again, listen. I must have been about four when we lived in a large Paris apartment near. So I can wiggle it now without making any difference. My father was. So what a nice little, uh, what a nice little fix. Do you know what? Not a bad little device. Obviously, you can just use your phone instead. But uh, yeah, I can see, I can see the appeal of that. And again, 100% a natural fault, just from plugging in taking it out maybe it dropped a couple of times and it just shattered those last little bits there so just by using your eyes you could easily fix something like that fantastic another success let's move on to the next one next up we have this tape player here it reminds me of something i would have had with the spectrum 48k anyway i put it in press play and it seems very very slow but when i've sort of put the tape in the other way and put the other tape in i'm not sure it seems to have sped up now to begin with it was ridiculously slow but if you have a listen So you can hear that is, uh, to me, that sounds slow. And this, I think, is the archers. Do you think we're taking a trade? Ah, the postcards. I gather you're doing posters as well. And relics. And someone... So to me, that sounds like it's about like 20 or 30% slower. Maybe even more. To this, 
to live a purely urban life behind the walls of Christianity. Yeah, that's definitely not right. Oh, I'm not sure what could cause that. Maybe it's so it's too tight. I wouldn't say that the belt is too tight, and I think it's too new for the belt to be too loose. So I don't know. It sounds like a build up of friction that something is struggling. Let's take it apart and see if we can see anything obvious. So on this one here, I take it all apart and there's nothing obviously wrong with it. There's no loose wires, it all looks good. The belts all look fine. Basically, I'm gonna show you what I did, but I think it's more of a workaround than an actual fix. But if any of you guys watching this know what the problem is, then put it down in the comments because I can always revisit this along with other items in the future. But I'm just gonna show you now what I did, but I have spent quite a bit of time on it, just looking over it, and what I thought is maybe the motor's playing too slow, so I actually undone the motor, and then I plugged in the tape cassette recorder but I didn't have the motor connected and I put voltage in via the bench power supply. I can't remember what it was now but it didn't make a difference whether it was like 3.5 volts or 5 volts it still played at the same speed. It was a case of the motor working or not working so I thought that was quite interesting. I thought the more voltage I put into the motor the quicker it would go but that wasn't the case. Anyway I think it's a mechanical problem I'm thinking maybe it's to do with an accumulation of things. So I don't think there's maybe one thing wrong with it. I think it could be, for example, like when you're dealing with an old toy and it has split gears, it's not one split gear that makes it fail. It's one split gear putting a bit more friction on. And then the next split gear puts a bit more friction on. And after about the third or fourth gear, the whole mechanism seizes up. So I'm wondering, could that be at play here? Not too sure. Hence the reason why I'm fast forwarding through most of it. But anyway, let me start playing now where I think I may have found something. I'll play you this. And if I put pressure on this capstan roller here, you can hear it will change. Hey, not too hot to begin with. Oh, yes, sir. I've saddled both of them. I'll be off in a minute. Why so don't you I wonder, okay. is it just all? Because the thing is, it's going to be quite cheaply made. I don't think it's a circuit board problem. I wonder, is it to do with like springs and stuff like that, where it's just got a little bit too much pressure on here? You know, it's too tight, it's putting the tape, it's, it's kind of, the tape's, uh, as the tape's going through, it's being pinched a bit too much maybe, and allowing it to be a little bit uh, a bit slow. Because it's, it's fighting to push it round. So what I really need to do is try to bend this down this way a little bit. You see this spring here, could this spring be ever so slightly tight? So that one there. Because this is doing the spinning, you see, and the tape goes here. Yeah, tapes through here. Then you do this, it pushes up against it. But look, is it pushing it too much? You can see how much it goes up. Look, ready? Look at that, the form in there. Would it not be better? Just a little bit off like that. I think this spring could do with loosening up a little bit. There. Right, so this here goes up there. See, that's incredible, that's a very strong spring. I think, you see the way it's kinked there? I'm gonna take a little bit of a kink out of it. I'm gonna bend it just this way, just a bit. There we go. Now, let's see if that's gonna do the job. I presume that goes. So we're gonna be going in here, this bit here. There we go. Now is that deforming as much as before? Maybe. Well, before I do any more, let's try it again. So you can see when you press play that this moves up here. Yeah. Either. Oh. oh, and this is the record head just here, look. Because when you press record, which is this one here, can you see it pulls up that one? Yeah, and that, that leaves it down. Oh, I know I 
shouldn't get carried away, but ever since that moment when Fly came in third at Felpershire, you've been bitten by the racing bag. Right, that to me sounds better, unless I'm just imagining it. It's not, is it? I'm not imagining that. Before it was pushing it right up, now it's not. I think it's going to work. Whether this was the problem, or whether I've just done a workaround, I'm not sure. But I think it was friction based. So let's pop it back together and uh, we'll call that one a fix. Not particularly interesting. Well, my buttons all seem to work. And record works there. Right, let's see now what it's playing like. I think that sounds normal. I tell you what, let me record my voice because then I should know what I sound like. I tell you what, let me record my voice because I should know what I sound like. So yeah, if it sounds fine, then hopefully it will be all good. Testing, testing, one, two, three. Because I should know what I sound like. That's perfect. So yeah, if it sounds fine, then hopefully it will be all good. Testing, testing, one, two, three. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that because to me that does sound like it's recognizable that it is me. So let's move on to the next one. But this one here personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable selling this because it doesn't, uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I haven't found the fault to fix. You know, I've taken pressure off the capstan roller, but I think that's just a bit of a workaround because I think it's an accumulation of friction on the gears. And by just taking a bit of pressure off, I've probably just taken a tiny bit of friction out of the actual running order of the gears, but there's still gonna be, uh, what, you know, whatever the original problem was, it's still there, isn't it? Because I haven't actually fixed anything. So yeah, I'm gonna put that down as a, a partial fix, a maybe fix. Right, next up we have this one here, faulty, no power. Woo! And uh, yeah, this certainly is faulty, no power. So when I plug it in, it's got AC and DC. I haven't tried the DC, but it's not working on AC here. Listen, right, if I, uh, this clicks, again, it all feels incredibly cheap. There seems to be a lot of friction on here, but it's not coming on. As well as that, if you have a look at the tuning dial here, it goes off the scale up the top, but then it doesn't work its way to the bottom. So there's something wrong there. So uh, yeah, there's no point in trying it on batteries because it's not even working on the AC. So there's definitely a problem. And I think because these are all linear, I presume this is gonna be another linear power supply. I'm not sure how often they go faulty. So I think they're pretty, pretty reliable. Let's take it apart. I think this one will be fixable. I've been very lucky so far with this whole job lot. Well, I think we might have to prise out. Oh no, here we go. Right, there we go. Excellent. I'm just gonna pop the speaker out just for the moment. There we go. These came straight off. So the tuning wheel, well, we'll worry about that Ah, now, how are you supposed to line that up? How are you supposed to line that up? All the way there and all the way there. Right, well, we should be able to work that out on here. You know what I mean? We should be able to line that up, go all the way up and then do it. We won't worry about that yet because it's not working. So we're going to have power coming in to the yellow ones here. Why is power not actually going into the board then? Should we measure the two prongs and then we'll know whether this linear power supply is working? Again, I've got to be careful that I don't touch any of this mains side here. So let's plug it in and we'll see, you see this yellow one, this should be the low voltage two prongs here. Let's see what it's doing. Right, I'm now gonna plug it in. Let's go to volts DC, see what we have. Oh, bridge rectifier here, so there's, oh sorry, it's gonna be volts AC because we've got the bridge rectifier here. I wonder whether it's this little voltage regulator just here. I bet that's the culprit. Ooh, hold on. 
7.7 .7 volts, that might be correct. I wonder what it's supposed to be. What well, we've got, four batteries? Six volts, yeah, so that, that sounds right. Okay, so we've got seven point whatever volts it was there. Let's now go to DC. After the bridge rectifier, it's gonna go into, let me just have a look through here. If I'm honest with you, I can't see, but I can see a very bad joint just there. Let's see if we've got anything on this bridge rectifier. We have, we've got three volts. Have we got anything here? 2.4 volts, I wonder what we should have. Hmm. I wonder would it work on batteries? Let me get some batteries in here because then we'll know what we're, uh, you know, what we're dealing with. Let me zoom in and show you that bad joint as well. See here, it doesn't look very healthy, does it? But it is still, it's still making a contact, I think. Let me get some batteries. Right, apologies, I couldn't quite get the full mix of batteries. Annoyingly, I had to use two that were the same. Right now, I'll plug that back in there. Whoa. Ah, okay, so it works on batteries. It works on batteries, but it doesn't work on mains. Interesting. Right, let's pop the batteries out and we'll have to find what part of the mains is like, you know, separate to the batteries here and that might make sense about what's going on. Let's get this board out. Out of all the products, this is the one that feels the most plasticky. So this is gonna be our AM thing here. We've got the FM aerial here. So now, why is the mains not working? Why is the mains not working? We're gonna to have to follow the path, aren't we? Let's zoom right in and see if we can work out what's going on. There's no power going into it at the moment, so it's perfectly safe. So we know we've got voltage here. This one looks like it goes down, through, 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 and it's gonna be connecting up this side and this side here. These two here, fine. Okay, then it's going across. So the DC, Is that side there and that's coming in here so now these ones go here here and here so this is the output here isn't it and also around here okay so that thing goes into the capacitor and that goes to here and it goes along doing something up this way that kind of goes all over the place right this one here goes to here and also down here, and the positive here. So if it's working here, it says to me then that we haven't got, we've got voltage here, and it's working on the, on the DC. But yet when we plug the power in, we haven't. Let me plug power in AC now, and let's see if we do have something here. Also, let's see if it breaks the circuit when we plug the the, DC, uh, the AC jack in. So this is not plugged into the wall at the moment, this is here. But right now from the battery, it goes all the way to here. Yeah? But if we plug this in, it should break that. Because again, we have that fancy switch there. Yeah, so it does break that, so that's good. So we're gonna have it coming in on the yellows. So we should have voltage here. This is confusing for me, I'm gonna plug it in. Go to DC. Oh, here we go. What? It's now working. What's going on? Why is that now working? 
What have I done to make it work? Oh, well, stranger things have happened in life. To be fair, that's happened to me lots in the past, especially when I was younger. Something wouldn't work. You take it apart, and then just in taking it apart, you fixed it. And it was just a case of putting it back together again. Yes, it's very annoying when it does happen, because I'd like to know why it was faulty. It was definitely faulty. The original buyer of it wouldn't have returned it if it wasn't faulty. And secondly, when they checked it, then in the shop then they wouldn't have said yes it's faulty if it wasn't and even if those two people got it wrong when it was on my bench to begin with it definitely didn't work on ac power there was nothing there at all weird thing is it was kind of put together wrong remember the tuning thing was wrong so I'm not too sure what's going on here i would say it's something to do with the rotary volume and on and off switch i think by me messing with it i've probably dislodged something that was lodged stopping it from working and now it's working again either that or it might have been some sort of dirty contact or something and by me rotating it round on and off a few times I've cleaned it up but anyway it's working now what we do have to do is we have to get that tuning wheel because it needs to be taken apart anyway we have to get the tuning wheel in the correct position it's going to be easy to do I just need to put the wheel on the board either all the way up or all the way down and then I need to do the one on the actual front case all the way up or all the way down and then before I screw it all up I'll just make sure that I've got full movement all the way up and all the way, all the way down because remember before it was going off the scale and then it was dropping down and it was leaving a third untouched so we'll put it back together. Just because I'm editing this up now, I can actually tell you that about a week later, this is still working fine. I've turned it on and off quite a few times and it's worked every single time. And the reception on this isn't too bad. It does seem to pick up a few things. So it's incredibly plasticky, but yet it does actually work. Right, here we go. And that's FM and it's working fine. It just seems to be working every single time now. So, uh, you know, on uh, battery and also power. Strange. Jazza is round at Jim's right now. Really weird. Right, next up we have this massive Bluetooth speaker here, and it's like got a wood finish on it. To be fair, it looks, it's got a certain charm to it. It looks quite vintage, which is what it's supposed to look like. So uh, what's happening with here is I've had it charging for about two hours, and it has put charge, Recharge. it has put charge into it, but even after two hours, I've gone to play it here. It's connected up to my phone, fine. DSI XL. And you can hear report. treble and bass work. Um, but every couple of minutes it keeps saying, My battery, please charge. Perfect, on cue, thank you. So I think that's the problem with it. I don't know for sure. Maybe if I charged it up for three days, it might get charged back into it. But after two hours, you would expect it to get some sort of charge into it. So let's undo these four, six screws here and see if I can uh, see if I can get into it. The finish on this one looks quite nice. So I say this is slightly more premium. It's also got aux in here as well. If you want to make it work for our 3.5 millimeter lead. Wow, I wasn't expecting this to be that straightforward. Check this out, all connections, even these are screwed on. This actually does look nicely repairable. Oh, okay, right, it's, uh, it's got, oh, it's a double, it's a double pack. And it plugs into here. Let's measure this one. Let's see what voltage we do have in them. Seven point nine. Well, that's high, isn't it? So I wonder why. Why is it struggling to power it? I'm wondering now if it is a battery problem. I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's get our bench power supply and let's input voltage into it, 7.9 volts, and let's see if it's still doing that, uh, you know, if it's still saying that thing. Because to me, 7.9 volts, I mean, what's, what's that? 7.9, 7.9 divided by two, 3.95, and they're gonna be 3.7, but about 4.1, 4.2 fully charged, well, 4.2 fully charged. So I suppose this would be 8.4 fully charged. Hmm. I wonder is one cell 
more than the other. Let's not, let's not dismantle it yet, just in case it's not a battery problem. Let's get the bench power supply connected up to here. So I'm just soldering some wires onto where the battery normally plugs into and that way then I can feed power in from my bench power supply. Well I'm going to leave it play for a bit and I'll see if it, uh, if it makes that uh, you know low battery thing. DSI. Low battery, please charge. DSI. Interesting, did you hear that? DSI. It said low battery, please charge. So let's put it all the way up to 8.2 because that would be 4.1 volts each. And now let's see if it still does it. So it looks like it's not a battery problem. Battery, please charge. Now it did say it then at 8.2 volts. Hmm. So it's interesting that it isn't a battery problem, but bench power supply is set to 8.2 volts and also high amps as well. I think it was 1.7 amps. So there's definitely something on the board which is either dropping the voltage or maybe the brains of this is incorrect and it's thinking it's low voltage when it's not. I suppose we could zoom in and follow the path. Maybe there's something which is... Uh, like a voltage regulator which isn't you know regulating the voltage properly let's have a look that's for the switch oh hold on switch turn on so this must go to the switch no oh yeah it goes to here and then it turns on ah this must be a voltage regulator here because can you see from the battery the positive goes to this part of the switch and then it also goes up to here though is that feeding something else? But then it goes uh, through the switch onto here. So when the switch is off, like now, off, it's not going to be passing through. So if we unplug, well, no, let's leave the plug in. So from here, it's not going to be, it's going to be going to here. Yeah, but it's not going to here. That resistor there. But when we turn it on, it will go to that resistor there. So let's turn it on. Now we're going to that resistor. So this is a voltage regulator. Could it be the voltage regulator, which is not doing what it needs to do? So let's pump voltage back into it. I'm going to lower it back down to eight volts. Well, actually, do you know what? No, I'm going to do, yeah, let's do eight volts because that's going to be what the battery is when it's nicely, uh, nicely charged. So eight volts. The right hand side is the positive. So that's that one. Okay. Now we're going to get our meter in and let's see what it reads on that voltage regulator. And nothing there, so that must be the ground. And then we've got it going out here. 3.2 now, is that right? 3.2, that seems low, unless it's a 3.3 out. Uh, hmm. Don't know. Let's just kill power a second. I'm just gonna go to continuity, just to see if that one there is a ground. Yeah, that's a ground. Right, okay, well, why is there such a voltage drop? Because here, here we've got 7.9, but when it goes through the switch, so what have we got here? Is it the switch? We've got 7.9 that side of the switch, but yet this side of the switch. Three, please charge. Oh, we have got 7.9, so it's when it goes through that resistor. 7.5. Oh, I don't know. Let's see if there's any markings on that voltage regulator. Yes, lots of markings. Well, hopefully I'll be able to find it then. It's 6206A, so I'm going to look up 6206A. Right, well, this is brought up here, XC6206, and it is a low ESR cap compatible positive voltage regulator. And it says here, that it's, uh, it's selectable within a range of 1.2 volts to 5 volts. Weird thing is, it, it does say the maximum operating voltage is 6 volts, yet we know it's, what was it, 7 point something? So it's higher than that. But it doesn't actually say what the output is. So I thought, well, could it be the fact that the resistor is incorrect, but this resistor here says 220, which is going to be 22 ohms, and it is measuring 22 ohms. So if I go here, on that little resistor feed in it, you see it will say 22 ohms. So that's all okay. 
And the diagram shows that there's capacitors before and capacitors after, and there is. We've got electrolytic caps here. I, I, I don't actually know what's wrong. Right, so have a look around the place. This one over here is going to be to do, this is going to be like the audio amplifier chip, isn't it? Because look, it's going through all these inductors and you've got the speaker here and speaker here. So you can see, it goes through the inductors and it goes into here. So I don't think that's going to be like controlling the kind of brain side of it. This one here is an operational amplifier. It says for tone control. So maybe that's what's dealing with the treble and the bass. This one here, I can't find but it does come up with Bluetooth when I type it in. And if you have a look, can you see this antenna here? Because there's no Wi-Fi on this, it is only Bluetooth. So the, uh, the antenna here goes through here into this chip. We know that this is a voltage regulator and this one here is some other voltage regulator type thing. And if you have a look, you see that the cables coming up from the charging thing. Well, they go round through this through into here, sorry, around here into here, and also the battery goes into here, here as well. So I think this is to do with the charging of the battery. I think this here is the brains of the outfit. I think this is Bluetooth and also like a, a controller all in one. So I think it's this thing that's producing the sound to say that the battery's low. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna plug in the battery back into it, turn it on, and I'm gonna use my FLIR cam. Just in case, for example, there might be a capacitor here getting hot, which is draining it down. If I can't find any heat spots anywhere, then I think what I'm gonna do is, I might take off this voltage regulator. I might pump five volts into the output, because this is the output going to the capacitor here, and see if it still has the problem. Because let's say if it's supposed to have a five volt output and I give it five volts here, and it's still saying it, then it says to me that this thing here is probably okay. Right now, what have we got going on here? Don't worry about reflections. Now let me put my finger in. See the problem is when I put my finger in, you see how cold the board is. Sometimes you can see things get warm, but then when you put your finger in, you realize how cold it is. Well, okay, well there is definitely a couple of things. That chip's lighting up, isn't it? This one here. But that looks normal. And this one's lighting up. This one here, the operation amplifier. But again, I wouldn't say that's overly hot, it's 29 degrees. Everything else looks uh, looks fine. And this is lighting up a little bit, isn't it? Again, it's not warm. No, there's nothing wrong there. You know what? I don't think, I, I, I don't know enough about this to be able to fix it. But what I'm gonna do, which is a bit of a cop out, I think I'm going to change the electrolytic caps just in case one of them's faulty and it's not putting the correct power through to the Bluetooth chip. Because apart from that, I don't know what else to do. Right, annoyingly, it's still doing it. I've changed out all the capacitors. The capacitance reading on them were all perfect. This one here was a little bit high on the ESR, but it was still under what it was. So the, the worst case scenario is 0.09 and this was 0.08, but everything else was well under. So I'm gonna keep them because I don't believe they're at fault. So what I've been doing is I've actually been charging it, and even when I'm charging it now, you can see the lead going into the back here, it will still come up with low battery when I'm playing it every couple of minutes. So uh, not much more I can do, but I will, what I'm now gonna do is I'm gonna unsolder that little voltage regulator using some hot air, and I'm gonna put, let me just double check what, what it is actually, uh, what it is actually, I think it was 3.3 volts. Let's just have a little looky here. So we can go straight across the capacitor because the capacitor's coming off here. Right, so 3.2 volts. And I'm gonna put 3.3 volts into it. Let's just pop it off. There we go, lovely and easy. Right, now I'm gonna solder a wire onto that pad there. 
Now let's go set the bench power supply to 3.3 volts, but we'll keep the amps high. I think it's at 1.8 amps. Let's see. Okay, it's 3.3 and 1.784 amps. That's going to be ample. And you can see there, 3.297. Now, I mean, I don't know if it should be 3.3. Maybe it should be more than that. But uh, I'm thinking it would be like 3.3 or 5. So let's turn this off here. Let's plug this in here. Plug this in here. Now, I hope I don't blow it up by adding in a different power supply going into it. I think it should be okay. So this is going to be the positive, and this is the negative. So on there, on there, and turn on. Is it going to work okay? Let's see. Right, I'm going to listen to a bit of music and stuff, and then uh, see what uh, see what happens. Right, this is really, really interesting. It's the second song being played and it hasn't done it once yet. And I'm not connected to any external power supply, it's purely the battery and my bench power supply for the chip. Now remember before I said there was a voltage drop and I was thinking, could it be the resistor? Yeah, remember I measured the resistor. Well now that I've taken this chip out, yeah, this one is now out, check this out, on the input, we no longer have a voltage drop. So if I go straight onto the battery, try not to blow anything up, can you see 7.9 volts? Yeah, and now if I go on the input leg of the chip, we now have 7.9 volts. There's no voltage drop. I think that chip is causing some sort of voltage drop. I think that chip is to blame. So I'm gonna keep playing, because I'm enjoying the music regardless, and uh, I'm gonna start looking up this chip, see if I can buy myself one, or I might even put in another voltage regulator one that does 3.3 volts on the output. Great news, that must be the fifth or sixth song I've played now, and it's perfect, it hasn't happened once. So I think this was causing some sort of weird voltage drop that we kind of witnessed when we put our meter across it, and I think that's what was happening. So I can buy them off eBay, it's down as XC6206. There is a UK seller selling this one here with markings, it looks like a nice looking chip like that one for £2.34. But I don't know whether it's doing anything too fancy, so I'm gonna see in here if I've got a 3.3 volt regulator, because for example, I've got one here, 3.3 volt, one amp. Well, I am gonna use this one here. It's much bigger, and also the pin orientation is not the same but it can allow up to 15 volts in and it's 3.3 volts out 800 milliamps so that's more than enough this is what it is it's an lm1117 if i go to here you will see that uh, annoyingly it is a different orientation so this tab in the middle one is the output while on my it's the input this is ground which is the same and then we have the input here. So it's okay, I'm just gonna you know, put it in a certain way that I'll be able to fit it in somehow. Right, so I'll just put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of hot glue, you know, the hot snot glue, and then I just placed it here. This one here is gonna be ground, this one here is gonna be the output, and this one here is gonna be the input. So I'm just running tiny little bits of wire from these ones here. So this is the input, so input is going to here, Output is going to the middle one, and ground is going to this one here. So I'll start here. And I've tinned it all up as well. So I just need to solder on the other two wires. I'm just using ethernet patch cable as the wires because it's nice and flexible and it's 100% pure copper as well. And then I go on to test it. This is working perfectly. I test it for over one hour, but I'll talk more about this just at the end of the video where I'm showing all the products and how much they're worth. Now, one thing I've missed out on this video is the shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive. So I'll put that in now. The members this month are kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeeps.com, DJVG, Pigsy, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Daniel Watson, Zeke C, Anthony Dean, Bazza2, Russ Melanson, Ellis Garbutt,
Gaspar Heller, Richard Berglund, Jacob Culpin, Matt Rawlins, and Soul Reaver 555. So many thanks, guys, for your top level support. Now, let's finish up this video at long last. Right, so here we are, the end of the video. I think we've done enough for this particular episode. I thoroughly enjoyed it. This one here was a complete winner. Really interesting to see that it's the same transistor that failed on my other one from three years ago. So how many of these have been sent to landfill because of that tiny, tiny, tiny little transistor that costs pennies? This one here, I think, was probably one of my favorite fixes of all time. I'll come back to that in a minute. The rest of them here, this was kind of bog standard, but a nice little fix on the headphone jack. This here is annoying because why did it start working? I think it's probably something to do with the on and off switch here, but I don't know. Maybe when I edit the video back, I'll have more info on that. And this here, isn't a fix, it's just a kind of bodgy workaround that I did. This here was a complete winner. Not because the product's amazing, because it's not. The sound isn't that good, it's quite loud, but there's no tweeters or anything on it. But it was so interesting because I thought that voltage regulator was working because we measured near enough 3.3 volts on the output, but it shows you it wasn't working properly. And when we took it off, the voltage drop had gone. So thoroughly enjoyed that one there because by taking that off and feeding the voltage in via the bench power supply, it shows you how handy it is to have a bench power supply. We then had it running perfectly and I've had this on for one hour now and it's been playing perfectly. So yeah, 100% is fixed, there's no doubt in my mind. But when I get the proper chip, I will put it in there and then you see it's done as the factory intended it to be as the original designer, rather than putting that chip in that I put in. But you never know, the chip that I put in might actually be a better chip because it is like an 80p chip, while these from China are probably going to be more like, you know, 20 or 30p or something like that. So uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed that one. Brilliant. Now, let's just work out how much each of these are currently costing if you were to buy them new. Right, so the boombox is still currently for sale for $26.99, but it is only available in silver and purple, so maybe the pink one is no longer. And the cassette recorder is still a current item at $29.99. The little radio is $14.99. Right, these were here, but they're sold now. Four of them are sold, they're out of stock. $29.99, £29.50. It says, fully working condition with power lead and instruction manual, no original box, collection only. So if you add them all up, if they were new, you're looking at around about £131.46. Bearing in mind, we don't know what this cost new and we don't know what this cost new, but what are they gonna be worth now? Well, this does look brand new, that looks pretty new, this looks new as well, and to be fair, that does look new, but you can't sell that one. So I'll tell you what, let's knock off the price of that one. So that's minus £30 off that one because I don't think anybody would be buying that because I haven't actually fixed it. So you're left with that. And I don't know really what you would get for these. Let's say you might get a third off the new price because, I mean, that is... You probably get half price for that one there. But uh, if we were to divide that by three and then... Well, there you go, divide it by three. So £33.82. So obviously that doesn't work if you take your time into account. But that price there has pretty much paid for the box, the job lot in the first place. So it would be ideal maybe if you wanted to fix them for yourself or if you wanted to give them away to your family members, like sons, daughters, etc. Then I think, uh, yeah, I think you could have a lot of fun buying stuff like this off eBay. If you're doing it for a living, no, because the amount of time taken doesn't equate to £33 off uh, work. You might as well go out cleaning windows and you'll earn more money or cutting grass. So personally, I really enjoy videos like this because it gives you a nice mixture of honest thoughts and I will definitely be buying more Argos Returns because I've thoroughly enjoyed the two videos that I've done so far. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up and I will see you all very soon. Thank you so much for watching.